Cursor versus Google Anti-Gravity. So Cursor is the most popular AI IDE where you can have your code editor and code with AI. This is what I've been using all year. I love it. It's an amazing product, great team. But Google just dropped a very compelling competitor called Anti-Gravity. And I've been using theirs over the past week as well and kind of comparing the two. And it's been really interesting to say the least. So today I wanted to give you more of an insight into the differences between the two and see if there really is a winner today. So I'm Nathan Covey. I love to review software. I like to compare them based on this framework, looking at their features, their UI UX, their team, and their pricing. So if you love software too, and you're always looking for the best tools, please like and subscribe. It means a lot. Thanks. Okay, so cursor versus anti-gravity. We're going to walk through uh, the different aspects of each, list their pros and cons, and then I'm going to rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 at the very end. I love doing this, and we'll, we'll kind of see which one um, is the winner for now. So let's first start with features. So both of these are VS Code forks. They are extremely similar from a feature standpoint. Um, as you can see, you have like your VS Code fork, uh, cursor. This is cursor, by the way. Cursor, uh, they have their editor in the middle. You have your chat on the right side, your navigation right here. This is Google anti-gravity. So you have, yeah, very similar. It looks like Google's is more like the original VS Code where it's lined up right here. You could probably change this. I, I haven't checked if you can, but out of the box default, this one's more like the original VS Code. Um, but yeah, like extremely similar. You have your editor right here. You have the chat, like Google copied cursor almost exactly. You have your models right here. So very similar just from a, a 30,000 foot view. Um, when you start to get more into the details, there are differences. Like for example, Google right now only has these models, whereas cursor, you can do whatever model you want. And this isn't like a huge con because these are honestly the best models. Like Claude Opus 4.5 is like my favorite model right now. And this is the one I'm mostly using. Um, so Google has like the most important ones. They notably do not have any open AI ones though, except this open source one. They like, they don't have GPT 5.1, which I actually think is, this is a pretty good model and it can, it can kind of do things that I haven't seen others do. So notably they don't have that. Cursor also has their model, of course. But yeah, I found... Uh, cursor has more models. Also cursor, uh, they both have these agent modes. So cursor introduced this a few weeks ago where you can either be more focused on like the editor and the code or more focused on like the AI and talking with that. And Google has their version too, like open agent manager. Um, I like cursors UI UX a little better. I don't like how this is in a separate window. Um, so that's a negative for the UI UX on Google's uh, front in my opinion. But anyways, extremely, extremely similar as you can see, uh, Cursor is obviously more mature from a feature standpoint. So if I just go to like the cursor settings here, here, let's put these, oh, I like, let's do this in editor mode so I can actually see. Cursor just has like more, they have more options here. I like how cursor has the completion sound when they, because a lot of times I'll like do a prompt, I'll come back, I'll, I'll be doing something else and then I get the ping to show that it's done. So I really like that. Uh, they just have like, yeah, this is very mature. Their tab mode is really, really good. Uh, Google's, they don't have as many features. It's a brand new product. So they don't have all of this stuff, but I found them very, very similar from a feature standpoint. And in, in terms of code output, like, like I said, I've been using this for my iOS app called Harmony. I've been using both of them. And from just like the output and the speed, they've like, I haven't really noticed a huge difference if I'm being honest. So they're, they're very similar. So if we go back to our thing here, features and UI UX, Cursor has a little bit of the edge in terms of features, just because it's a little more mature. You can choose your own models. Um, I also say they have the edge on UI UX overall, um, just because of like, this is the main reason, honestly, like the agent and editor switching. I don't like how Google's opens a new window, but that being said, like it's close. It's not like they're way ahead on either of these points. Um, if we're talking about team, this is an interesting thing because you have on the one hand, you have a startup, like this is. Cursor's a startup. They're only like, I don't know how old they are. Maybe two years old. When was Cursor founded? Let's see. Okay, 2023. Yeah, they're like two years old. And then you have Google, which is like this huge company. So this is a really interesting topic, like team. Which team do you prefer? I would say, this is just my personal opinion, but I would prefer Cursor's team for now just because this is their main focus. This is their business. This is their livelihood. They ship like crazy. Like... If you guys remember Windsurf, Windsurf used to be like a thing. Cursor basically buried them because they just like shipped way faster and made a better product faster. I get an update almost every day in Cursor. Like there'll be this little pop-up down here. They'll say, update your app. And I haven't noticed as many updates for Google anti-gravity. Obviously, I think Google, knowing how Google's structure works, they're probably treating anti-gravity like an internal startup. So they probably have like autonomy and stuff. But it's just, 
I, I think if I were willing to bet on who's going to ship faster and be more committed to the product on the long run, I'd probably go with Cursor. But Google has deep pockets. They have really deep pockets, so they technically could give Cursor a run for their money. I would also say one thing to note with Google is like Google is notorious for killing products. Not that they will kill anti-gravity because I think this is a pretty big product for them and I, it'll probably be successful. But like, for example, I follow this account. It looks like they like got rid of this account, but there's this account on Twitter called killed by Google. And it's like pretty popular because they notoriously will kill projects that people are like invested in and stuff. So I, I'd probably give cursor like the slight edge on team. And then pricing. This is where things get really interesting. This is where a few months ago when Cursor and Windsurf were more com comparable on like a product standpoint, Cursor had the edge in terms of pricing. This is where Google could really beat Cursor just because once again, they have deep pockets. They have really good internal models where they could give themselves a price advantage. And I know Cursor is making their own model now, but Google's got to be pretty far ahead in terms of models. Cursor also does probably have a lot more usage data though to work with. So their models could get a lot better. But anyways, these are their pricing plans. Cursor has their free week trial. They have $20 a month. It, this basically just gives you increased usage. I've been using their $200 a month plan and it pretty much gives me every like enough usage for the whole month. They also have teams and enterprise plans. If you look at Google's, their free plan right now is more generous because it's not a free trial. It just gives you a bunch of usage for free, <laughs> like every week. And I actually use, like I was using this a ton uh, for like a whole day and it, I only reached the limits like at the end of the day. So it was actually pretty, like if, if you're not trying to spend any money, like anti-gravity is very compelling right now, but this is public preview. So I'm sure they're going to rein it back in because they don't want to be losing money. But like I said, Google has deep pockets, so they could, they could subsidize this product for a while and it could be like a loss leader to really like gain market share. So that would be interesting. And then they have the plans. They have a $20 a month plan that I've been doing, but they also have like their mega plan, $250 a month. It includes though a lot of other stuff. Like you get access to their, their video models, which are like the best right now. You also get YouTube premium, which I love YouTube premium. So that's awesome. This like Google, they could really hurt cursor. Like this is, this could be really compelling for some people, this package. Like if they're, if anti-gravity is almost or just as good or like the difference is negligible between them from like a product standpoint like this is going to be scary for cursor honestly and they don't have organizational plans yet but they said that's coming soon so yeah very very interesting so just kind of wrapping it up i don't want to make this video too long and i'm sure there's a ton of things i miss you should let me know in the comments like what you think the differences are between these two and any little things that you've noticed but i would say cursor their feature set is a little more rich right now you can select your own models um that's a con can't less models like there's just less flexibility right now but they're probably going to change that soon the cons are probably like their free trial because th that's not bad on its own but when you compare it to google anti-gravity like their free plan their free tier is very generous so that so that's awesome google anti-gravity also like it's a good product like i'd say like it's very comparable they have deep pockets so they can really like invest in this and they can subsidize their plans and like make it cheaper for people. And that's, I think that's really what they're going to try to do. They're going to just try to rob cursor of their market share. So as of today, me personally, I'm going to keep using cursor to build my stuff, but I am watching anti-gravity very closely and I'm going to keep like trying it. I'm on like their cheaper plan. I might go back to their free plan and just kind of like use it and keep watching it. I'd probably give cursor like a 9.5. This is an incredible product. Cursor is amazing. I, I freaking love it. If you're not using cursor to code, um, I know they have like the coding AI, uh, coding CLIs, like uh, Claude code and stuff, but I just really prefer like the IDE. This is an amazing product. 9.5. I'd give anti-gravity like a nine. It's like a really good product, especially for a new one. And I think this race is close. So I think Cursor has a slight edge right now. Anti-gravity is on its heels. I'd love to know what you think. Which one do you like better right now? Is there something I missed? Please let me know in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Let's go.